So hi everyone, good day. So I am Cardinal Junjun and today I will be discussing the three major kinds or three major types of verbs. So we have the action verb, the linking verb, and the helping verb. So after this discussion guys, you will already know uh, if what kind of verb is it, if it's action, if it's linking, or a helping verb. So verbs. So, verbs are words that express action or state of being or situation. So, let's take a look at these examples. So, the first example is, I joined a choir. So, the action ver verb there is joined. Kasi nagpapakita siya ng action na pagsali sa isang choir. And then, the second example is, I am a choir member. So, the second sentence there is not shows a action or a movement. Kasi, the word there, am, is a linking verb. It's not an action verb. Um, matutukoy po natin kung ano po yung pinagkaiba ng action verb at saka yung linking verb. So, let's move there to the three main types of verbs. So, the first one is action verbs. So, action verb, it's shown an action or a movement. So, that's what I have said earlier. Nagpapakita siya ng action or movement. So, we have here an example of those words that we considered an action word or an action verb. So, we have the give, gave, eat, ate, walking and walked and then the example there is i watch a titanic last november so the the word watch is an action word and of course the sentence there is tapos na po siya nangyari i watch a titanic last november so tapos na siya nanood ng titanic last november and then, let's move to the second types of verb, which is the linking verb. So, linking verb, it connects a subject to its adjective or predicate in a sentence. So, it states there, it does not indicate any movement or action. So, as what I have said earlier, ang linking verb is nagdudugtong lang siya in between the subject and the adjective. And then, we have an example there. Example number one. I am a left-handed. So, the am word there is our linking verb. And the word left-handed is an adjective. So, hindi siya nagpapakita ng action or movement kasi siya yung nagdudugtong in between the subject and in between the adjective. Okay, we have here, it includes the, the linking verbs, the word verbi. So, we have eight forms. So, we have the am, be, is, are, was, where, being, are, been. So, we have here an example also. So, I am excited. So, the word am is a linking verb and the excited is an adjective. So, um, why am um, is a linking verb? Kasi, as what I have said earlier, siya po yung nagdutugtong in between the subject and the adjective. So, we have here also two examples. So, ma-identify po natin siya if it's an action word or action verb or an linking verb. So, the first example is your perfume smells like a rose. And then, the second one is Jonathan smells like a freshly baked cookies. So, let's think if what sentence shows the action or a movement. So, the first one, your perfume smells like a rose. So, it does not indicate an action verb, the word smells. Kasi hindi po siya nagpapakita ng action. Kasi, ina-identify lang po niya na yung pabango niya po ay amoy rosas. And then the second one, Jonathan smells like a freshly baked cookies. So that shows, that indicates an action verb. The word smells, kasi 
napapakita po siya ng action kasi inaamayamo niya po yung freshly, freshly baked cookies and then the last types or the last kinds of verbs that I'm going to discuss is the helping verb. So, helping verb are used before an action verb or a linking verb to help convey additional information. So, these are also called modals. So, I have here also an example. So, the first example is I am watching Anting Cabisote Season 2. So, the word am, of course, it is a thinking verb. The word I is a subject. So, the word act, act, watching is an action verb as well. And Other ways of classifying verbs. Classification of verbs. A verb is a word which can assert something usually an action concerning a person, place, or things. So, kung may ngang taong verb, it is described an action or condition. Most verbs express action. Some, however, merely express state or condition. With this, number one, we jump for joy. So, the verb is jump because it states a action. So, number two, rabbits grow into the sides of hills. So, verb is blow. Number three, while well, memoryless, I can never forget you. So, the verb is the memory because it is a state of condition. A verb phrase is a group of words that is used as a verb. So, having verbs plus main verbs equals two verb phrase. So, we just need to add the helping verbs. Or um, and then verbs for makabota or verb phrase. Okay, for example, number one, the leaves are turning. So the helping verb is are and the main verb is turning. So next is, the money has been found. So the helping verb is been and the main verb is found. Certain verbs when used to make verb phrases are called auxiliary. That is adding verbs because they help other verbs express action or state of some particular kind. The auxiliary verbs are is, are, was, were, etc. May, can, must, might, shall, will, could, would, should, have, had, do. Did, for example, number one, I am writing, so am is the auxiliary verbs. Number two, we must go, so must is the auxiliary verbs. Number three, you will fall, so well it's the auxiliary verbs. Number four, he has forgotten me, so has is the auxiliary verbs. Number five, we had failed. So, had is the auxiliary verbs. Number six, I do see him. So, do is the auxiliary verbs. The auxiliary verb may be separated from the rest of the verb phrase by the other ones. So, for example, number one, I have always liked him. So, have is, is the auxiliary that support the main verbs, which is the like. Number two, I shall soon send for you. So, shall is the auxiliary verb to support the main verb, which is the send. Verbs are either transitive or intransitive. So, a substantive that completes the meaning of a transitive verb is called its direct object. So, some verbs may be followed by a substantive denoting that which receives the action or is produced by it. These are called transitive verbs. All the verbs are called intransitive. A verb which is transitive in one of its senses may be intransitive in another. So when we say transitive, it is with object and intransitive without object. For example, boys fly kites. So, 
kite is an object so it is transitive and birds fly so it is without object it is transitive another example is the pirate sound the ship so the ship is an object so it is transitive and the stone sound so without object it is in transit is in its various forms and several other verbs may be used to frame sentence in which a word or words in the predicate describe or define the object I is known as a state of being verb or do not express any specific activity or action but instead describe existence the most common state of being verb is to be along with its conjunction like is, um, are, was, and etc. Such verbs are called copulative, that is, joining verbs. Is is this use is often called copula or link. For example, number one, time is money. So the is is the is. And number two, Grant was tireless worker, so was is the is. Macbeth became a tyrant, so become is an is. So kung nagabante mo, is is most on this scribe, so it is used a conjugation too. The copulative verbs are transitive since they take no object. Sometimes, however, they are regarded as a third class distinct, both from transitive and intransitive verbs. And the verb is is not always a copula, it is sometimes empathic and has the sense of excess. So, the principal parts of verbs. A verb has four principal parts, which is present, present participle, past, and past participle. So, let's go to present. The tense of a verb that expresses action or state in the present time and is used of what occurs or is true at the time of speaking and of what is habitual or characteristic or is always or necessarily true that is sometimes used to refer to action in the past and that is sometimes used for future events. So, kinisyang present nag-express ni siyang action. Also, to say that an action or state happens in the current moment. So, magamit po niya na to sa past. Next is present participle. A form of a verb that ends in ing and comes after another verb to show continuous action. So, for example, coming. Oh, it ends with ing. So, it is present participle. Oh, loving. Ends with ing. Basta mag-end guys ing, muna siya ang present participle. Next is past. Refer to actions or events in the past, they can be regular verbs that simply end with a D or an ED or they can be irregular and change their spelling to show the past tense. So, finish yung past, it's refer to action. Pwede sa di siya mahimong regular verbs. Then, and show sa D or ED. So, for example, and, it ends with D, so it is past. Oh, it can be regular verbs. Pwede sa ni siya ma-irregular. Ma-change sa spelling to show sa past tense. So, the next and lastly, past participle. The past participle is formed by adding ed or g to the end of the root form of the verb. So, same-same ro siya sa past, di ba? Pero, mag-end di siya sa root form of the verb. So, I have heard an example. She hikes to the hilltop. It is the present. She hiked to the hilltop. It's past. I am hiking to the hilltop. Present participle. I have hiked to the hilltop. Past participle. I have here a table. Present. Bake. Present participle. I'm baking. Past. Bake. Past participle has bake. Second is act. 
is acting, acted, have acted, and lastly, believe. I'm believing. Believe has believe. There are two kinds of verbs, regular and irregular. For a regular verb, parts are made in the same or regular way. The past and past participle forms are made by adding ed or d to the present form. So, mo na to siya ganina kung giingon sa past and sa past participle kung di siya mahimong regular or irregular kaya with ends by ed or d. So, the present participle is formed by adding ing to the present form. So, mo na siya. Spelling changes might be needed as in hurry, hurried. The voice in mood or verbs. Voice refers to the relationship between the subject and the action. If the verb has an active voice, then the subject is doing the action. If the verb has a passive voice, then the action is happening to the subject. In other words, the subject would normally be the object of the verb. There are two types of voice, active and passive voice. Verbs in the active voice shows the subject acting. Verbs in the passive voice show something else acting on the subject. Most writers consider the active voice more forceful and tend to stay away from the passives unless they really need them. Examples of voice Active The hunter killed the lion. The passive here is the lion was killed by the hunter. Next is someone has cleaned the windows. The windows have been cleaned. Like I said earlier, the active voice shows the subject acting, while the passive here shows the action is happening to the subject. Next is mood. Verb moods are a classification that indicates the attitude of the speaker. Verbs have three moods, indicative, imperative, and subjunctive. The first one is indicative, which indicates fact or opinion. The indicative, the indicative mood is a verb mood that the speaker or writer uses to express information that sounds fact well. Examples: He was here. I am hungry. She will bring her books. The next one is imperatives, which expresses commands or requests. Though it's not stated, the understood subject of imperative is the sentence is you. So, ang inyora hinumduman aning imperatives, guys, is kum nash nagkoman siya or request. Examples: Be here at seven o'clock. You you be here at seven o'clock. Cook me an omelet. You cook me an omelet. Bring your books with you. You bring your books with you. The last one is subjunctive. When you express a wish or something that is not actually true, use the past tense or past perfect tense when using the verb. To be in the subjunctive, always use were rather than was. Example, any guys is, if he were here, but he's not. I wish I had something to eat, but I don't. It would be better if you had brought your books with you, but you haven't brought them. Oh, more to guys. God bless and thank you. Tone. Tone reveals the author's attitude about a subject or topic to the reader. It can be delivered in different ways, like through word choice, punctuation, and sentence structure. It's similar to when you're engaged with someone in person. Examples of tone. Formal tone, informal tone, and humorous tone. Tense. Tense is the time of a verb's action or state of being such as present, something happening now, past, something happened earlier, or future, something going to happen. Examples of tense, present tense, past tense, and future tense.